we've just finished up a week here at Revamp and been working on the Commodore trying to get that going and we've done some work putting the engine in, some work around the engine, some work getting the diff all to fit up inside the car and also trying to finish it, the trim out in the boot, get that finished. Uh, so we're going to run you through what we've been up to this week and hopefully you enjoy it like we did doing it. Love the chase and the hunt, and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want, and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no, I'm funded. Play the game like it's nothing. I'm always thankful for something. Don't take for granted, stay humble. Now wake up! It's time to look at the enemy. Look in the mirror if he is no friend to me. It's not working now, maybe it's the chemistry. It's time to break up so I can make a better me. Better believe in your mind, cause it's everything. You can mold shape, find almost anything All it takes is some time and some clarity to find your identity It's mind over everything Before putting the engine back in the car One thing I particularly wanted to double check Since we're running Since we're running a twin plate direct clutch services clutch on this uh, was previously fitted to the car already um, I wanted to double check the clearance once this is installed that's going to be between the clutch fingers and the uh, throw out bearing on the gearbox to make sure that we're not riding hard against these while it's all installed um, We'll have to do that by a series of measurements off the back of the block here, off the fingers of the clutch when it's installed, and inside the bell housing with the bearing. So that's what we're going to get up to at the moment. We were just checking our uh, concentric uh, slave cylinder clearance to the clutch fingers here and we thought probably be a good, good thing for people to see how to do it. So we've already got our measurements here but I'll just show you how we got those measurements. Because our fingers are inside of our clutch plate we have to get our straight edge measure measure in between the back of the engine block where the gearbox bolts on to our straight edge and measures up basically the same as our measurement so we take that as our first measurement then we have to subtract our second measurement which is the depth of the clutch fingers from the face of the clutch hat. So we can take that measurement in here. That's close to what we originally got. So that's that measurement there. So to find out the distance from the clutch fingers to the face of the engine here, we take the first measurement, we minus the second measurement, which gives us our third measurement here. Then what we need to do is go to the gearbox. We need to push our slave cylinder back all the way. Get our straight edge across the face of the bell housing. And then we measure our fourth measurement in here like that 
and that's pretty pretty close to what we got so this is our fourth measurement here the gearbox so we take our fourth measurement subtract our third measurement and that gives us our final clearance between the bearing face here and the fingers of the pressure plate now depending on the manufacturer of the clutch it may depend on the clearance required so that clearance measurement is best to check with your clutch manufacturer as to what they require ours was eight millimeters as a minimum so 9.14 millimeters is fine Toby's just got the engine up on the crane. We're putting it in now. Yes. Hopefully it, uh, no. it's not gonna give us too much trouble, like they always do. Just try and get one of them bottom ones in. We've only got four bell housing bolts. Down from the bottom. Yep. Um, you should be able to get down the side and just put it back it's into the engine. Oh, is it? Oh, I've got that top one. I've got this one. back in the Commodore after a agonizing 18 month wait. All right. Ready for some boost. We start. It's looking sexy down in the hole there. That sounds sensational. Alright guys, this is going in first time, guaranteed. Wait, are we taking bets on this? Let's see. What about the oil lines? I moved them already. Oh, oh the collector's a bit thick. Now you can go to the back further a bit more. Oh. It's got one of the bolts come back. Maybe if you let your jack down to where it should be. Wait a sec, wait a sec. Got no engine mount, but we'll... Slowly. That's cool. Oh, Let it down a little bit slow. No way. No way. It's doing it. It's doing it. <laughs> oh. First go. No way. They were worried about the other lugs on these Brodix heads in the exhaust, but there's no, no issue at all. They're, they're cleared miles of room. I don't think the spark plugs will have any problems either. Good. So... Well, they say first in, best dressed. Mate. Doesn't really count for here, but hey, first go. That is first go. And, like, look, I like this. The fuel line's coming up here now, mm -hmm. nicely protected. Nicely, nicely protected by the, the A-frame here and the heat sleeve. Mm -hmm. Really just concentrating on that heat management of this car it's just horrible before there's heat everything cooked wow it's all coming together
the engine's in. Flow's uh, on. Yep. We've had to do a fair few things change from how it was set up in the car before. Partly because of the Mazir water pump here and the BTR manifold. Uh, with the water pump, we've had to do some work with uh, making up heater hoses, or not heater hoses. We've had to do some work with making up radiator hoses, so we've made a pipe there because we can't actually buy a hose that direct fits. And we've also had to make up one down here because the fitting to connect to the water pump is tucked right under here, which you just can't even see. As well as that, we've had to do some custom heater hoses from the water pump outlets uh, around to where the heater tap's gonna be. As far as for the manifold goes, we've had to change our fuel system, which we've changed basically the way the whole fuel system is, but we've had to change the location of the pressure regulator, uh, the, the way the fuel system runs around the car. We've also had to change the vacuum system on the car. Now, the manifold hasn't come with enough small outlets for us to run the required things for all the accessories and map sensors and all sorts of various bits and pieces that we needed for this car. So we've had to do, so we've had to do a vacuum block down the back of the car here. So it's just a block, has a single connection in, multiple connections out, and that's how we've got all the um, vacuum connections we require. Uh, the other thing is the steam port arrangement that we had didn't fit this manifold at all, because there's no room actually underneath the manifold. So we, after a bit of searching, we found Nitrous Outlet make a kit to suit the BTR manifold, which you can see down here. Even that, ordinarily this distribution block mounts on the front, but because of the way we run a custom header tank on this car, uh, the best mounting location for it was gonna be at the back, so we can connect to our custom header tank over here. And so that was all basically swapped all the fittings around and just re reconfigured all the fittings that came with the kit. When I started digging into the harness a little bit, starting to put it in the car, I started to find some areas where the wiring was uh, cracking around the plugs, that kind of thing. Also the, the, the injector wiring and everything just didn't really fit nicely. Uh, also, things like the throttle body wiring had to be rearranged a little bit and just some things that aren't in the harness anymore and some little repairs here and there. I've had to split a lot of the harness apart uh, to try and just get it to look better and fit better. So that's taken us a little bit of time to do that as well. But hopefully that should be finished soon and I'll get that back in the car and should be close to getting it started up. Okay, we're gonna go see what Toby's doing to the car. He's meant to be making some room for the tail shaft to the diff, because it was a bit high. What's going on here, brother? Oh. Have you managed to fix up the... Holy God! I thought you were cutting a, a small hole for it to fit. Yeah, it just sort of like... Escalated. It's escalated yeah. to a large hole. Yeah. But, you know, <laughs> this is what we're going to do, alright? Well, the tail shaft was a bit high when it moved up and down, so I touched the floor, we're going to knock it up a bit. Tobes is... Here's a piece I prepared earlier. Oh, that looks fantastic. It's going to go in like that. Hopefully we don't have to modify the base of the seat too much. I think we might a little bit. Well, it's foam on the bottom with a few bars. We can cut them out put them into shape, weld them back on, and the foam will sponge oh. around it. But yeah. Well, that looks fantastic. It actually come up a lot better than I yeah, well, thought with that hole in um, there. It's just kind of what we ha we've had to do to get the ride height that we want. Um, 
with this four link kit, we just pretty much could not get uh, low enough ride height to even match the original independent rear suspension. So we basically made the decision to do what we need to do. And this is what we need to do. There's a couple of spots underneath um, that's still got to go. But yeah, that's our tail shaft for here, under here. And the diff center's right there, in front of the diff center. Um, looks like we're going to be able to keep the original handbrake cable mounts, but it just uh, they're just under here, about a hand's length from the cut. Um, that's good for when we want to when we uh, get to making up a handbrake cable setup. But yeah, we pretty much needed it for the tail shaft clearance, just through this section here. And what well, there was a few other spots as well to get it low enough, uh, but. I think the end result's gonna be pretty damn low and pretty damn cool looking. With this Rod Shop four link kit, to get it to the lower ride height that we actually wanted, close to the ride height it had with the independent rear suspension, we actually had to do some floor and chassis mods. A um, little bit unexpected, but you know, so be it. We do what we gotta do. At a low ride height, we found the control arms here would actually hit the chassis rail. Hit the chassis rail here. Uh, and also up here, the control arm mount would hit the chassis rail there as well. That's for the upper control arm. And it was like that on both sides. Then at... At the back... Yeah, at the back here where the um, diff center actually hits the cross member that the original rear mounting for the diff was um, welded to. So we've had to just notch a little section out of that as well. Noisy motorbikes. Then when it came to the tail shaft, the hump in the floor actually came down here. And basically because the independent tail shaft didn't have to move up and down with the suspension, so to get this tail shaft, the clearance to move up and down with the suspension, we've actually had to put a section here where it would be under the seat. So that's raised the tunnel up for the uh, tail shaft. We've still managed to keep the original um, handbrake cable mounts for when we put a handbrake cable back in it. But yeah, we've had to make that extra clearance just here. All right, this is the hump under the seat, the inside view. Um, you can see it's actually, doesn't look a lot from underneath, but from in here it is quite sizable. We didn't want to muck around with this too much because this mounts the seat and we didn't want to get any closer to the seat belt mounts because you know, they're all safety issues realistically. Um, so we put seam sealer on it, painted it, and then we're going to redo all the sound deadening on, on it, put some extra uh, around here and extra through here because there's going to be exhaust running fairly close to the floor as well. Um, and just try and protect the rear passengers from a bit of heat and a bit of noise and stop any vibrations through the body. So the boot is basically done. You can see we've Got the nice carpeted flat floor. Got our battery box in here. It's a fully sealed battery box with a vent in the side here. Uh, that vents to the outside. Uh, we've got the fuel cell underneath here. I'll just open that up. And can be filled there. You can see the fuel system under here, under here. That's all vented in a vent box which is up behind here.
just trying to keep trying to keep a usable boot, trying to keep fumes down for the passengers and just make it a lot better and a lot more user friendly than what it was before. So we're pretty happy with the progress on the VX. Uh, engines in as you saw, uh, tail shaft adjustments to the body are done, boots in, a bit of boot space back, cover the fuel cell. Um, the wiring harness is getting looked at. Everything seems to be coming along pretty quick. Hopefully it gets started soon. I'd say next week um, she should be ready to run and um, we'll, we'll definitely make sure we film that and show you guys how she sounds. Uh, there's a few other videos out that we've got on the VX, uh, the, the 9 inch install, we've got the dyno, stuff like that. So go check them out if you like to see the progress. Uh, thanks for the support and all the messages um, and all the comments, we really appreciate it. If you've got any questions, leave it down in the comment section and I'll get back to it as soon as I can. Um, again, appreciate all the support and hopefully we'll get uh, the VX started up and running this week and we'll show you what that sounds like. Alright, thanks again and see you next time on Revamp.